Alrighty. Does so, everybody have a uh, marker paper with them? Yeah, mar marker paper just works well. It's kind of a transparent uh, paper that doesn't um, doesn't bleed as much. Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm going to start off by going through the different brands of uh, markers. And a lot of you most likely have Prismacolor, which is a great, a great brand. It flows really well and is um, mid-range uh, priced. You can, uh, we'll zoom in on these if I do a couple. So here we have Prismacolor. And if you need to zoom in. Okay. And another great brand that's also double tipped is uh, Copic. And these ones are quite expensive, but the, the colors are a little bit more like, rich. And again, you do have the small side for doing detail work. And another popular brand is Chart Pack, and these ones tend to be hard to use because they're they're very juicy and they bleed slightly. So you can see they end up having a more of a watercolor effect. So this was a 20% Prismacolor, a 30% Copic, and then this is a their their 20% for chart pack, so in for each brand, these are the 20%. You can see how kind of rich the color is, but it does bleed slightly. So if you're looking for it's kind of more um, artistic effect, uh, chart pack works works really well. And I'll put this down here. And another really awesome marker that Copic makes is their wide marker. So if you're ever doing large displays, you need to cover large areas. Um, you're doing like installation work. This one has a really wide tip. And so you can get huge areas really fast. So it's kind of, it's pretty fun. Um, especially if you're doing a yeah, large, large format pieces. So I'm going to start off by working with some basic forms, a cube, a cylinder, and a sphere. And so I'm just using, uh, I'm going to go, go about this two different ways. The first way is, is knocking out a shape with pen. So I'm just going to create a... cube here. And even if you're, so for in this instance, my cube's not totally perfect, but you can always tighten it up afterwards. And if you have your 30% or a 20% marker, um, I think I asked you guys to bring 20 and 40. What we're going to do is, at each point where the plane is changing, we're going to start to bring the color down. So from this top edge here, we're going to shade down alike on this side as well. And then we're going to leave this, the top area last. We're also going to define our, our light source. It's going to be coming from the left down. So this is going to be my darkest area, and then uh, medium, and then lightest. And when you're using markers, again, just like you would if you're drawing out your forms, you want to be using your shoulder. 
not, um, you know, if you need to do detail work, you can get in there with your hands or if you've been using them for a while, but you want to keep your stroke consistent, like how I was doing here. So everything's pretty much in, in line. We're not going this way and then hatching it, um, unless you're trying to go for like a basket effect or some type of texture. So what you want to do here is make sure that your the edge of your marker is in line with the edge of your shape, especially with cubes, and then you're going to be drawing kind of away. Okay. I can do the same thing, but I'm going to rotate my page so I still have that same angle. But now I can see that these values are pretty much the same. So I'm going to come back once this is dried a little bit, and by laying down another layer, you can increase the value. And on top, and now this is just using one, uh, one marker, you can create these values, so darkest, medium, and then light. For this side, I could leave it um, a little bit white, but I'm going to add a slight bit of gray. And the more white that you leave on the shape, it's going to show that it's um, more reflective. Like if it was a glossy cube, you're going to leave more white space. So this is almost like a, a matte finish cube. And then for this top part, I'm just going to add a little bit of shade from left to right. And I can even come back here and add just one more little bit of value and maybe just a slight bit on this part here. So the reason why I didn't go all the way to the edge here is that you want to go light. To a dark edge up against each other or if you're shading the other way dark to light so that's in in this area right here by having this dark edge up against this light edge it shows contrast and informs your viewer that there's um, the plane is changing so it's a flat surface that's, that's coming down if, if I were to keep the same value going across the whole thing, it's going to flatten the, ob it's going to flatten the object out. Um, and so from, from here, even though my, my box is you know, it's a little, little bit rough, um, hopefully um, if you brought in some type of fine liner of a Stadler, um, little drafting pen here. I can come in with a straight edge. Just slightly define the edges just to give it some pop.
it if I wanted to. I could clean up these interior lines. Or if I want to add a little bit of reflection you can, on the edge, you can add a little bit of a little bit of white in along the edge. It's kind of hard to see from uh, from back there. Yeah, this is a color pencil. Good. It's a prisma color here. So just for a basic cube, this is one way to go about it. If you wanted to have a more reflective shape, I'm going to actually, instead of using pen first, I'm going to start off with my 20% marker and lay out a cube. Rotate my page so I'm keeping the, the same lines. Then from here, I'm just going to go a little bit faster and leave more, a little bit more white space. Again, rotate the page so that you kind of get a good line stroke here. And I'm going to even leave more white space on the top. Again, I'm going to have the same light source from the left side. So initially this looks really rough, but you can come back in and work on the shading a little bit. And another uh, thing you can use with the marker paper is not only draw on the front side of the page, you can also use the reverse side. And by using the reverse side, it's going to be more of a subdued shading. So it's not, you're not going to see as much of the line strokes if you want to kind of make something deeper, but you don't want to add in uh, more marker strokes. So I know it's, it can get kind of confusing because when you flip it, it's obviously backwards. So it's kind of figure, okay, I'm shading this side here. And then you can turn it. Again, I'm going to go in here. And just made it a little bit, a little bit darker. Clean up this edge here. Knocking out the outside a little bit. Just make sure my lines are good. So this this cube would be a little bit more of a reflective uh, surface because you're seeing a lot more of the white space, whereas this one have more of a matte finish and maybe a little bit more lights reflecting off the top. Now from here, you can use, if you have a credit card or another form. So it's rough, but then now I can add in some more detail here. thing that you can do is get it lined up with an outer edge and then slide your straight edge across 
I'm going to get a more accurate edge. Do the same thing here. And you could either define the inside with black, or you could leave it like this, but use a little bit of white, just give the inner edge some, some reflection. And I, I didn't put any marker along this edge, so it already has a little bit of an edge there. And I could even come back in here with a even a, a marker or a pen that's a little bit uh, heavier in weight and just define the bottom just to make sure that people know that it's on a grounded surface. Oh, not totally perfect. We tweaked a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go into a, a cylinder. So with this one, again, you want to make sure that you're doing your line stroke with um, the side. If, we're, if we were doing this in two-point perspective, you're still going to follow the direction of your vanishing points. Um, you could do this vertically, like how I'm going to do the cylinder, but you want to make sure that you stay consistent so you're not going this way and then, you know, kind of angling it out in different ways because it's going to confuse the viewer by keeping everything pretty much in line with the shape, then they know that it's just shading, it's not defining a part of the, the object itself. So for this one, I'm going to start off with some pen. And using my shoulder. There's a those squat cylinder here. And with the, the bottoms of your cylinders, it's always a safe bet to have it, you know, as let's say this was a coin here and have it at this angle, just to have the bottom part of your cylinders turned down a little bit. Um, if you have it just a little bit kind of turned up a little bit on the bottom, it looks kind of like you cut off the cylinder uh, too early and it um, can confuse the viewer. So with, with a cylinder, and we'll be, we'll be doing this later on the, in the semester, if you think of a, a, value, a value chart, and we were to, to shade from dark in the center out to light, darkest point in the center and then going out to white. We're going to be using the same technique on the cylinder. So if you could imagine that this band was it's almost wrapped 
you know, around, around an object. So again, I'm going to have my light source coming from the top left. Now you can always switch this, and what that's going to do is it, it just, as you rotate this, the shadow is going to move around the object. So you could have the light coming from the front. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain how to figure that all out. So I'm going to start with my 20%, and because the light's coming from this direction, you're going to have a core shadow along this edge. So in a sense, this region here is the core. So we'll say this is the core. Then these outer edges are mid-range. And then, you know, this here's your kind of a uh, kind of light range here. So kind of one, two, three, more or less sectors. So I'm gonna actually opposite my light source, I'm gonna start in kind of still using my shoulder and in the direction of the outside of the shape, I'm gonna lay in my core shadow. So that's where it's gonna be. But I'm going to start with my 20% and work both directions, then come back with a darker marker and then add in the contrast to give it more shape. So just with my 20 here, I can work my way down the object. Now, you don't want to go all the way to the edge on, on these sides. You want to leave a little bit of white there just so it helps give it some form. There. So with this, right, my core shadow is going to be right here in the center. I can even use my 20% again just to give myself an idea of where it's going to be. So light coming this way then shadow on this back side. If you have your 40% or uh, 50, you can add in one more line here. And then as I work my way out, I'm the pressure of the marker is getting less. So for this darkest point, I have a kind of a firm pressure down. Then as I'm working my way out, it's, I'm, it's getting lighter and lighter. And that's something that just takes, takes some time. So you can see that it's starting to look like it's wrapping around, almost like if I took this little section here, put it on a can, and, and wrapped it around. And if I wanted, I could use an even darker marker. Here I have a, a 50%. I could lay in one. Again, you can always ghost over your form. So if you want to make it even more contrasted. And if it gets, it looks like it's a little bit too much, you can always come back with the lower uh, percentage marker, here's my 30, and just kind of go around the, out, the outer edges and just kind of even it out a little bit. Okay. And for the top, as we're working with the cubes here, you want to have a light edge up against a dark edge. So when I'm shading the top of this, I'm going to go from dark on this edge, moving towards the core shadow to light. So you can almost think of this, and we just did the ellipse exercise. If I drew the minor and then major axis on here, um, 
that even if I were to take this and draw the minor axis this way, this direction is how I'm going to shade towards the, the core shadow. So with my, starting off with my 20%, again turning the page, just kind of, oops, just kind of lightly come in here, and even if, even if you go over a little bit, it's okay because we'll come back in with our colored pencil and knock out the outside and the edges. Then as far as for shadows, if my light's coming down this way and I were to do a top view, my light's coming this way, the shadow is going to start from these three points. So that would be, again, remember I did my axes here. And so if I were to actually draw a line here, I'd have a point there, point there, and in front. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And it would give me a shadow in this shape. So almost if you can imagine lines coming down from this point onto the surface, and then from this back side. So if I give myself these three points and start to imagine what a shadow could be like for this. Okay. Now I'm going to use my uh, black colored pencil. Prismacolor, and I'm going to start to define the bottom edge of this. So, I'm actually going to flip my page over because it feels more natural to work this way than trying to be like this. So, make sure your pencil's sharp. outer edge a little bit. Okay, you can even use on this side if you wanted to. Use a straight edge just to tighten it up. You could also do this with pen too if you wanted. But if the outer edges are going to be this dark, I want to make sure that the, this bottom edge is going to be the darkest. So if you notice when objects are along or on, on a surface, there's always a shadow at the base. Okay. And then I still have the actual shadow here. So what I'll do is I can use say my 50% here and work away from the object. So okay. And I can even I can come back in with my colored pencil just lightly shade this out like a gradient. Okay. 
And I could even, if I want to define an even deeper shadow in here, with, with the edge of the uh, colored pencil, just add in a slight bit of a darker shade. so on the top lightly. So there's a, a quick cylinder there. Now on to the sphere. We'll do the sphere, then take a break and um, we'll work on these and then I'll come back and actually do like a little project, maybe draw like a little, uh, some quick ideations of a Dremel tool or some type of hand, hand tool. So for a sphere, you can either, again, um, try out different ways. Use your, uh, you could use a gray marker or if you're using a colored pencil, just draw a really light sphere. If you, if you happen to have a stencil, you can, um, you could use that. But I would try and uh, draw it freehand if possible. So I'm actually going to start with my gray marker, 20%. Kind of using my shoulder, try and get a rough, a rough shape. It's not totally perfect, but it'll do the job. So for this exercise, I'm going to have my light coming from the opposite side. And so at this, I'll draw another, another one here. So at this point, Point, you're going to have your highlight and this zone here you're going to have your core shadow your mid tones in this area working its way up towards the highlight and then your shadow underneath you could do the same thing if you were if you have the light coming down vertically, you'd end up having your highlight up top, core shadow down here, and then your base shadow underneath. So it just depends on wherever the light's coming from. It's the same techniques, but you can play around with that. So with with this one, or just with the like with the cylinder, we shaded going around the object. So, even though we did vertical lines, we're giving it a form like it's going around. You want to be thinking about that too when you're doing your sphere. If, if I had a sphere here and the light was coming this way, if I left this point as the highlight up here, but I merely shaded it like so, left this part and then made it dark down here, it doesn't tell us anything about the shape. I mean, for all we know, that this could just be a flat circle on the ground. There's no shape or form. So when you're shading anything, think about its form. And your marker is going to help you uh, develop that form, just as contour lines. Um, if you think of like a topographic map and how it follows the mountain forms and shapes, you're going to be doing the same thing with your markers. So you, you want to, when you think of a sphere, it's round. So when you're doing your marker stroke, you want to make sure you're staying with that form, not just filling it in like so. Now if you're um, you know, doing a side view, which we'll do one later, um, you, you can shade in certain ways where it's um, totally you know, perpendicular or um, parallel to the shape. And... Uh, 
you don't have to actually do a, a curve form, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So I'm actually going to rotate my page so that it, I can work in the form like so. And I'm going to kind of leave this top part here as um, in my highlighted area. I'm actually, you know, I look kind of, kind of funny, but just coming in here and just did a, a quick starter where I'm just going around the form like so. And can you know, redefine my highlight. Now, like in this area here, I'm going to start putting my core shadow, but I'm going to use the same marker just to kind of give myself an idea of where I'm going to be laying that in. So again, it's almost like making a smiley face. Okay. And if you think about a cylinder, and if it were to have contour lines, I mean a, a sphere, sorry, if it were to have contour lines, almost like the AT&T logo. It's almost like that in a sense, but we're only doing it on one, one side. So from here, I'm gonna, from my core shadow, slowly start working in kind of my gradient towards this area. I'm not working this way, I'm just keeping the same flow. And also to make sure that your marker doesn't go all the way to the edge of your sphere. You want to leave a little bit of reflection if this is going to be a reflective um, sphere. If it's not, you could adjust that to fit the object correctly. But we're going to do one with this kind of slightly glossed. Okay, so I got a kind of a good start here. Looks pretty rough right now, but I'm going to actually come back with, uh, you can use your 40% uh, percent. I'm going to actually grab a 50 and really knock in this core shadow. And I'm also going to lay in my floor shadow just to get started. So just like the cylinder, and I have my light coming from this direction, the light's going to hit these points kind of on the, the sphere, but actually, so it'll be a point kind of you know, here on the side actually one up at towards the top. So if you think of if it's on this you know flat ground um, actually this was a top view so you'll end up having a form like so. If it was a side view then it's almost like the light rays so here's top side. So you'd end up having a shadow like so. So from here I can start to lay in my shadow. Now depending on the angle of the light, so the lower it is, the longer shadow it's going to cast. So this is just kind of a you know guesstimate if it's coming down this way. Maybe it'll go a little longer, but that's that's okay for this lesson. So I'm actually going to build up the form a little bit more from the core shadow. So it has a little bit more transition. 
transition. And now I'm going to start to knock out the overall shape with my colored pencil, the black. And if I need to, I can adjust if needed. If I need to add some more marker, which it looks like I'm, I'm going to. Sometimes if you happen to get it a right size, maybe there's a, a stencil that's that'll fit perfectly over it. Oh, pretty close. Not perfect, but and I'm actually gonna intensify this core shadow a little bit by adding in some colored pencil. closer to the edge. Then work in my shadow. Fifty percent for my shadow at the base. Now I can use the black colored pencil and really get in here and make it dark along the base. So here's just a quick quick study of a sphere. Again, it's not you know, totally perfect, but you know, if someone was viewing this, they'd understand the form. Um, clean up these edges a little bit. And you can always play around with yeah, intensifying the shadow a little bit. Again, if I wanted to make the light come from this way, I could flip this over. Or if it was coming from the top, it would almost be like you know, this in a way, coming down. So why don't we take a... A, a little break from the demo and we'll come around and uh, help out with some of these forms. Again, if you're doing a sphere or a cylinder, now try doing it freehand. There are stencils available that can help you get the perfect shape, but um, if, you can, if you can nail it just with a uh, freehand markers kind of gives it a, a good feel and again it's not going to be you know totally perfect but you know what drawing is perfect it's, it's going to have some life life to it with um, the marker stroke line weight
So there's just a really quick sphere done.